Welcome back to Newsday. Thank you for staying with us. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja on Wednesday declared null and void the provisions of the Nigeria Broadcasting Code, which authorizes the National Broadcasting Commission to impose fines on broadcast stations for alleged breaches of the code. The ruling handed down by Justice Rita Ofili Ajumugobia was on a suit instituted by media rights agenda against the NBC following the commission's imposition of fines on a television station and three pay TV platforms in 2022 for allegedly undermining Nigeria's national security by broadcasting documentaries on banditry. Laria Arugundade is director, International Press Center, and a one-time chairman of the Lagos State Chapel of the Nigeria Union of Journalists, and he joins us now to take a closer look at this development. Many thanks for being here on Newsday. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for having me. Can we guess that you're pleased with this <laughs> development? Oh, yes. Very, very happy about it. And uh, we must uh, start by thanking the media rights agenda for acting on behalf of uh, the media community in Nigeria, particularly the broadcast media. Uh, all along, we've maintained that uh, what the NBC normally you know, do each time uh, they, they claim that a broadcast station has breached the code is against the basic tenets of uh, the rule of law. In the sense that you know, they, it, it's more or less like the DG or whoever in that office will decide that you've committed an offense and sometimes they won't even wait for your own you know, response before they go ahead to impose you know, hefty fines, which could be very, very damaging to the economic interests of the broadcast media, which means that most of the time they act as the accuser, the prosecutor or the investigator, and the judge in their own case. And that is clearly not acceptable. So we're happy that a court of law has put a judicial stamp on the position we've held all along that this attitude of NBC is actually contrary to the principles of uh, media independence and press civil freedom. A, a regulatory body is supposed to act in such a way that they also protect the economic interests of the broadcast stations. And when you just you know, impose fines, you are not even looking at their survivor. Now, this is not about saying that uh, we should break the code as media. But what we're saying is that at every point in time, there should be room for a broadcast medium to state its case against any allegation. All right, then. So when we look at um, this ruling and that the courts, of course, saying that the NBC exceeded its powers by imposing yes. these fines on yes. broadcast stations and TV platforms, what implications do you see this ruling having on the regulatory authority of the NBC and its ability to, of course, enforce these um, um, these um, fines, and then also, do you think that this in itself gives, uh, uh, let's say, media platforms uh, the the willingness to be able to cover more sensitive topics and more investigative uh, topics in itself? Well, I think with this uh, ruling, the broadcast media in Nigeria can know that NBC can no longer just breathe on their neck anyhow. Uh, much as we say, you know, step to professionalism, we never liked the fact that uh, you were never too sure that a sword of Damocles was dangling on your head anytime you're having a live program, you're having live, you know, conversation. So that itself is not, is not right. And what we've told NBC all along, and the kind of reforms we have sought, is that, okay, let me put it this way. NBC has a council. That council can be make, you know, something like an appellate court within the NBC itself. So if you are accused of a very grievous offense that may lead to fine or revocation of license or whatever, you can then put it in the letter that, well, you have a right to you know, appeal this to, to the council, and then the council can look at it. But what the court is also saying is that a regulatory body cannot exercise judicial functions. And this is not the first case of its type. I remember when, we, when they had a public hearing, we also cited another case. It didn't affect the media where another regulatory body took punitive measures against an organization. And the court held that, look, it was wrong. You don't have you know, that kind of power. So what would expect the NBC to do now uh, is to you know, go back to the usual you know, drawing board, have more conversations with stakeholders in the media industry on how it could streamline you know, its processes. 
Do, you know, we also have the NBC code. Mm. And what we've also told them is that the NBC code itself cannot act in violation of you know, the constitution. And it has to be a product of you know, the uh, consultations within uh, with stakeholders you know, in the industry. So the judgment itself is not a license for the media to act anyhow. But at the same time, and it doesn't mean now that NBC no longer has you know, regulatory functions. There are ways in which you can regulate without being punitive. You could regulate through dialogue. You could regulate you know, through you know, consultations. You could be, there are many you know, ways uh, that a broadcast uh, regulatory body can regulate the industry, but not in a way that you consider yourself to a body that you know, instills fears in the minds you know, of uh, you know, broadcasters. Remember one of the cases that uh, came up recently involved another, uh, you know, a sister television station where you know, a host had a guest. And you know, the guest, this was a live program. I'm here now, you are not in a position to know what I'm going to say in the next second. So if I say anything that you know, seems volatile, somebody cannot just come and grab you and say, you know, you are responsible. And in that particular instance, there was even an attempt you know, to make some corrections, but without any form of uh, uh, listening to the other side whatsoever, NBC just went ahead and imposed that fine. So it is this arbitrariness that we've always complained against. And now that we've had this court ruling, my honest advice to NBC would be that not that we're afraid or maybe MRA is afraid, mm -hmm. I think it would be the enlightened interest of NBC not to you know, appeal you know, this judgment but to really go back and look at its procedures, look at best practices in other places, so that they can regulate in such a way that we will not feel that they're actually strangulating the broadcast media. media. I'm going to stir the pot a little bit, because before we had you, we had Mr. Shabwale who was saying okay, the, the, that they will appeal. Yes. <laughs> 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 it doesn't end, it doesn't end. I saw you when I was coming in, and then, oh, well, <laughs> so, that was Mr. Shabwale. I actually wish you were, we had both of you now, but he said they will appeal. So in the event that they appeal this judgment, are you prepared for that? Well. MRA went to court, but we are very close to MRA. The executive director of MRA is actually the chair of the board of international president. And I'm sure that MRA will be, you know, be prepared. And if the judicial process allows, other interest parties may even you know, join this case and become uh, what they call the Vita Miss Korea or something like that. Yeah, this is a case of very, very high interest to the media you know, industry. And like I said, MRA is just speaking for the entire media industry. They're speaking for the uh, Nigerian Guild of Editors, they're speaking for Nigerian Union of Journalists, they're speaking for the Broadcasting for the Broadcasters Organization of Nigeria, all of whom have repeatedly said that NBC needs to recheck its, you know, its, uh, its uh, procedures. So for me, I, I would be surprised if they go on appeal. Well, but it's, it's, uh, it's, within right. it's within their right to do so, and I'm sure there are lawyers to feel that, oh, we can't just be you know, defeated like this. And we uh, want to be optimistic. We are not trying to prejudice the mind of uh, the judiciary, but we'll be optimistic that uh, the judiciary will err on the side of uh, the rule of law, as they have done in this particular instance. Do you anticipate any legislative or policy changes in response to this ruling, either to redefine the powers of the NBC or to enhance protections for media freedom in Nigeria? That cannot be ruled out. You know, even as we speak, well, in the Ninth National Assembly, there was a bill to amend the act establishing the National Broadcasting Commission. Uh, just as we had another one to amend the act establishing the Nigerian Press Council. We're not too sure whether this Tenth Assembly will not revisit that particular bill. Uh, again, that bill, in fact, gave more draconian powers to the two regulatory you know, bodies. NPC, for example, was going to be a power to withdraw, you know, the, the register, I mean, uh, licenses of uh, newspapers and so on and so forth. Uh, for those who may be anti-press freedom, they may want to use the path of legislation to uh, come through the back door to do the kind of things that the judiciary has not said. But the good thing is that any law, too, can always, you know, be tested in court. So even if they go by way of uh, this amendment and they decide to have a bill of an, or an act that does not meet the, the basic standards of a rule of law when it comes to media practice, you can be sure that it will also be you know, challenged. So it cannot be ruled out that uh, we may have such a legislation. But we've been to the National Assembly to state our objection. 
we've had dialogue with them, and I'm happy that when we went there the other time, that is the Ninth National Assembly, when the uh, committee on information had a public hearing, uh, some members of the committee actually stated their agreement with us that before you could you know, impose safety fine or even shut down a broker station, you have to go to court to obtain the leave of court. And one of the members actually stood up and said, well, there was nothing wrong with that. Because what the, uh, the NBC, what the amendment was saying was that you could be shut down, or, and, but after, you can then go to court after 30 days. So you will have been off air for 30 days before you can even go to court. And we said, we don't know any jurisdiction in the world where that kind of thing you know, applies. So I'm hopeful that even if we go back now by way of this amendment, they will be willing you know, to listen to us, to dialogue with us, so that we can have you know, an amendment. The, the case is not against regulation. The case is not against professionalism in the media. We need to uphold you know, ethical standards as much as possible. Uh, in terms of, uh, at a time like this, when volatile things are happening in our country, you know, banditry, kidnapping, as uh, broadcasters, so we, we have a duty, uh, you know, presenters, you know, producers like you, moderators of programs, have a duty to ensure that uh, people who speak or your platforms are conflict in obscenity. Uh, they don't insult people, they don't engage in hate speech. But when we hear or we are perceived to have heard, what we're saying is that deal with us on the basis of the rule of law. It's as simple as that. And I hope Mr. Shibuwale will agree with me on this point. We'll ask it. So that when it comes tomorrow, he will have changed his mind and said, okay, uh, NBC, don't appeal, don't appeal at all. Let's see. We'll, we'll definitely forward that um, to him. But I'd like to know, um, in what... When it comes, this is obviously a good a step in the right direction. Yes, what further yes. steps would you like to see to be, for Nigeria to achieve that press freedom that you probably dream of in the next, let's say, mm. five years? What further steps? We would like to see um, an amendment in the MBC Act first that would give the National Assembly a say in the constitution of the council. We are worried that when it comes to media regulatory bodies, the National Assembly virtually don't play any role, despite the fact that Section 88 of the constitution gives them oversight powers. All other regulatory bodies, the president would nominate you know, the, the chairman of the council, their board, and then the, it would now be subject to the confirmation of the National Assembly. If you do that, at least we would have the opportunity. So if somebody who is against press freedom, who has acted against media interests, going to become the chair of the council or the board of the press council or the NBC, who will be in a position to go there and say, oh, no, we are opposed to this. So the process all along has just been between the presidency and the minister of information. But we don't think that is right. We would like to see something that is different you know, from that. We want to see more dialogue between the regulatory bodies and media institutions on the best way to carry out you know, regulation. Because they must understand that uh, when you talk of the media, one of the reasons why we don't like this arbitrariness is that they forget that people have investments in these media organizations. Each broadcast medium has its audiences. So you can't just you know, deny the audience you know, the right to know. Uh, as we always explain, we, we will not have the media if citizens don't have the right to know. It is, it is the basis for anything relating to freedom of expression or freedom of the media, the right of the citizens to know. There, there are people who may not have their breakfast if they've not listened to Arise or watch your money show at Ditto, some other illustrations like that. So the, the public interest must guide all of us in how we manage the affairs of the media in the context of uh, regulation. Mm. Well, uh, uh, before we uh, let you go, I wanted to talk about, you know, when I was reading the, the report, the judge actually commended um, MRA for challenging NBC's action. Now, so from a media advocacy <laughs> perspective, do you think that this really signifies for, I mean, uh, more organizations or and individuals coming out to advocate for media freedom and freedom of expression? Anytime there's a breach of press freedom or violation of journalists' rights, our position has always been go to court to challenge it. Well, you know, sometimes people come up with all kind of reasons. Well, we're having some dialogue, you know, we're talking. Then the, the fair element, you don't know what would happen. You don't want your station to close down. Sometimes you want to go by way. So I feel that this case by their marriage 
should now embolden everybody to know that you have, you know, a right. And it's not just Nigerian courts alone. You can go to ECOWAS courts. We, the other time when the president, the former president, banned Twitter, and then BC followed up and said all broadcast stations must, you know, uh, remove their Twitter handles. MRA, IPC, in fact, more or less a coalition of uh, whistleblowers, many of us, uh, was in journalism. We all went to the ECOWAS court to challenge it, and we got favorable, you know, ruling. So for me, this particular ruling, this commendation, should now serve as an encouragement to all of us that uh, uh, at least we are not totally, you know, helpless. Mm -hmm. We can always seek the intervention of the courts when we believe that uh, our rights have been assaulted. Well, thank you so much. We like, we appreciate you, and hopefully, Mr. Shibori appreciates you. And we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Larry much. Ar Arogundade, Director, International Press Center. Thank you for your fight for press freedom, and thank you for being here. Thank you very much for the opportunity.